Unit 5 is about electricity and magnetism. Uh, subtopic 5.1 is about electric fields. And to start making sense of electric fields, we're going to first have a look at electrostatics. And that uh, requires us to actually um, have a, a quick review of um, atomic structure. So we need to make sure we've got uh, some of the basics under, under control. Uh, some things that you would have covered in, um, say, grade 7, 8, 9. Uh, just to make sure that we're very clear on what we're talking about when we're dealing with um, charges and movement of charges and so on and so forth. So what I'm going to draw here is just a, a very simple diagram of a, an atom. Um, and so we might have uh, something that looks like this. And then around the atom, you know that we've got these other little things that are uh, moving around in their uh, shells or in orbits. Um, and I'll just notate what each of these little things are. Uh, hopefully as I'm sketching this you can already identify what the, the bits and pieces are that uh, make up this atom. And the key for this over the side here, uh, those coloured in dots in the middle, uh, they represent protons. And a proton, uh, as you know, has a positive charge. And it's uh, found in the nucleus. And the other things that are found in the nucleus, uh, the uh, open circles represent neutrons and they have a neutral charge and as I said also found in the nucleus and the last one, the ones in the orbit around the outside, are uh, electrons, so that little symbol with the E- minus beside it uh, represents an electron and electrons are negative uh, charge and they uh, orbit the nucleus. So there's a very um, simple model of uh, the atom uh, and the things in the atom that have charge on them. Now you'll notice here we're talking about charge. I need to be a little bit more specific about what charge is. The symbol that we use for charge is uh, Q so lowercase q, sometimes we'll use uppercase q uh, as well. Um, it is a property and if you sort of try and think about exactly what charge is, it's a bit of a bit of a strange one. Um, and so we're simply going to say it's a property of a particle uh, or an object um, that basically gives rise to certain phenomena that we can see. Um, and some of those phenomena we'll deal with as we go through this unit. Um, and uh, helps to sort of put into context why it is that certain things occur. Uh, but what that property actually is, it's, a, it's pretty tricky to, uh, to actually sort of define it any more than just saying that it um, uh, results in certain phenomena. Uh, charge is measured in coulombs. And um, the symbol for coulombs is capital C. Uh, named after a scientist, so that's why the symbol has a capital. Um, to put the coulomb into context, the, the way to think about it is that one coulomb is the amount of charge that flows uh, when one amp of current uh, flows for one second. So it flows in a current of one amp And remember that uh, amps and seconds are SI units. Uh, so the coulomb is not an SI unit. It's de defined in terms of amps and seconds. So there's uh, how we measure charge. Now, if we're looking at charge on an object, um, we need to be a little bit more specific. Uh, with an object, it's going to become charged uh, due to either the loss or the gain of electrons. Um, and we'll just note here uh, what the difference is um, between losing and gaining. And something again that you hopefully can remember, um, if it's uh, a negative charge, that means that it has an excess of electrons, or in other words, it's gained electrons. If it's a uh, positive charge, it's going to have lost electrons. So when we're dealing with positives, we, we end up with an excess of positive charges, 
So it means that we've got more protons than we do have electrons, but it's actually the electrons that have moved that we haven't gained any more uh, protons. That's because the protons are, are very much fixed in the, uh, in the nucleus. Uh, if we have a neutral charge, that means that there are equal numbers of protons and electrons. So an atom uh, is, uh, has a neutral charge, uh, but an ion that's lost or gained electrons will either be positive or negative. The other quantity that we need to be uh, aware of here, uh, given that we're dealing with charges and if we're looking at uh, losing or gaining electrons, we need to be aware of what the elementary charge is. So basically this is the smallest quantity of charge uh, that can be transferred um, and that means that the elementary charge is the size of the charge on an electron. So we note that uh, in the following way. Uh, so we use the letter E for elementary charge. It's equal to 1.60 by 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. So it's a very, very small amount. So the charge on one electron is very small. Uh, so it takes quite a large number of electrons in order to build up any significant charge. Um, note there that I've highlighted that. That is in the data booklet. It's one of the constants that you need to be aware of. Um, you should also be aware that the charge on an electron, so note I'm writing Q with the subscript E for electron, that's the negative value. So it's negative 1.60 by 10 to the negative 19. So the elementary charge itself is just that quantity, 1.60 by 10 to the negative 19. The charge on an electron is negative 1.60. Uh, that then means that the charge on a proton is just the positive of that as well. So 1.60 by 10 to the negative 19, just putting the positive out the front there to really uh, highlight that point. The last thing then uh, is to have a look at what happens when we've got this um, difference in positive and negative. Uh, and again, it sort of ties back into that idea of um, charge being a property that explains certain phenomena. We've seen there that the charge on an electron is negative, the charge on a proton is positive. So if we have opposite charges on two different objects, uh, means that they're going to be attracted. So uh, that whole idea of uh, opposites attract, um, if we then have like charges, so if we've got two positives um, or two negatives on two different objects, it will result in uh, repulsion. Note that these two words here, attract and repel, they're actually examples of forces. Um, and so when we're talking about attraction and repulsion, we're talking about a force. Uh, and that force can be described by Coulomb's law, which we'll have a look at in the next video.